Beast Raban, the infamous Harkonnen Enforcer, is a character that Dune fans love to hate. But what do we really know about the man behind the nickname? In this video, we'll delve into the origins of Glossu Raban, the ruthless soldier who takes pleasure in inflicting pain and suffering on others, the guy who was sent to set a terrible example to the people he ruled, and the guy who was hated by his uncle for being all brawn and no brains. From his family ties to House Harkonnen, to his brutal actions on Arrakis, we'll explore what makes Raban tick and why he's such a compelling and terrifying character in the Dune universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Number 1. A recap of the political setup and basic lore of the Dune universe. Glossu Raban is the nefarious dark star of today's show, but before we explore him, it's imperative that you understand the basic polity and the rich lore that Frank Herbert's magnificent universe imbibes within itself. Dune is not your typical sci-fi tale filled with laser guns, androids, and slimy extraterrestrials although it does have these 400-foot-long worms. Frank Herbert's masterpiece explores a future society with a relatable set of problems – deceit, power struggles, and betrayal. And while most futuristic worlds are superficial, Herbert's creation delves into the human psyche and the motivations behind our actions. It's chock-full of intricate political structures, noble houses, and a battle for control over the planet Arrakis, which is also called Dune. There are also some mysterious forces at play, like the mystical matriarchal order of Bene Gesserit, the native Fremen people of Arrakis, and a prophecy that predicts the rise of a Kwisatz Haderach, who will lead the Fremen to a prosperous future. For the sake of clarity, I'll quickly go through these players and stakeholders before diving into Glossu Raban. Firstly, let's talk about the three houses that hold the reins of power in this universe. House Carino rules from the planet of Kai Tain, and its head honcho, Emperor Shaddam Carino IV, is the big cheese of the universe. Then there's House Atreides, who call the lush planet of Caladan their home, and House Harkonnen, who have set up shop on the industrial hellscape of Getty Prime. And Mr. Raban, aka Beast, is the elder nephew of Mr. Harkonnen, but that's not all. The Emperor can grant fiefdoms to whoever he likes, which is why House Atreides ends up with control over the lucrative spice planet Arrakis. Apart from these, there's also the Landsrad, a council of all the bigwigs, you could say it's something like the United Nations of the Dune universe but the three powerful factions pull strings from behind the scenes, much like the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. The Fremen, native to Arrakis, are none too pleased about outsiders mining their planet for spice and are fighting to reclaim their homeland. Then there's the Spacing Guild, who control interstellar travel thanks to the mystical properties of Spice Melange. And finally, there's the Bene Gesserit, a mysterious matriarchal order with their own agenda. The Bene Gesserit have spent millennia working on a breeding program to produce a superhuman called the Kwisatz Haderach, who can see both the past and future. Their end goal is to either bring about a utopian society, or let humanity fall into ruin, depending on how things pan out. They're kinda messed up, to be honest. But now, let's cut to the Chase. Number 2. Glossu Raban Origins House Harkonnen's approach to running their affairs could be summed up in three words. Cutthroat, cunning, and cold-blooded. They weren't interested in playing fair or following any kind of moral compass. And of course, their main concern was maximizing profits and power at any cost, even if it meant trampling over others like a stampede of sandworms. Fear was their weapon of choice, and they wielded it with all the finesse of a sledgehammer. From their army to their household staff, everyone knew that stepping out of line would result in a one-way ticket to a fate worse than death. The Harkonnens had no time for trust or loyalty, preferring instead to promote those who excelled in the art of rising through the ranks through any means necessary. You could actually think of them as the corporate sharks of the Dune universe, but with more blood on their hands. And our man here, Count Glossu Raban, had inherited all the aspects of the Harkonnen way of life, especially their penchant for violence and bloodshed. But he was somewhat lacking when it came to being cunning and outfoxing others. But make no mistake, he wasn't someone you could mess with. I mean, the native Fremen of Dune actually called him King Cobra, or Moodir Naya, which translates to Demon Ruler. So vile was Glossu Raban that he even killed his father, the humble and gentle man who was the exact opposite of Vladimir Harkonnen. It was this murder that earned Glossu the infamous title of Beast. But why did the Fremen call him a ruler? Well, it's simple, isn't it? He ruled them. But this raises another question. How does a man with all bronze and no brains get the 
opportunity to rule the most precious planet in the known universe. Well, Vladimir Harkonnen had the fiefdom of Dune, or Arrakis, for many years, but during those years, Duke Leto Atreides was gaining popularity due to his excellent methods of governance, as opposed to that of Emperor Shaddam and, of course, House Harkonnen. Seeing Atreides' rise in popularity as a threat, the Emperor made a plan with Vladimir to bring out the Atreides family into the open, where it would make it easier to eliminate them. The fiefdom of Arrakis was given to House Atreides, and they came to Arrakis, where Vladimir launched a surprise attack. Following this, he gains absolute control over Arrakis once again. However, ruling Arrakis has never been an easy task for Vladimir because of the rebellious and freedom-loving Fremen. So in order to get them to like the new Harkonnen rule, Vladimir sends his elder nephew, the Beast, to rule. Vladimir's plan was a stick-and-carrot approach. Since Glosso was a ruthless, tyrannical, and grade-A douchebag, his rule would be hated by the people. Once they would be on the verge of losing their minds, Vladimir would send his younger nephew, Fade Rotha, whom Vladimir admired and loved. This move would be welcomed by the Fremen, who might have even hailed him as a hero, at least when compared to his brother, Glossu Raban. Interestingly, Vladimir himself hated Glossu and saw him as nothing more than a tool to be discarded after being used. So that was more or less Glossu Raban, but his character has been painted with different flavors in various media, such as David Lynch's original movie, Villeneuve's new version, and the miniseries from the year 2000. Let's deal with them one by one, shall we? Take him to his desert. Number 3. The Role of the Beast in the 1984 Dune movie adaptation In the movie version of Dune, directed by David Lynch, the Harkonnen family sent their finest sadist, Raban, to rule over Arrakis with an iron fist. Played by Paul Smith, his mission was simple. Make the people's lives so miserable that when Fade Rotha finally arrived, he'd be hailed as a savior. But then, Lady Jessica and her son Paul Atreides came along and ruined everything by joining forces with the Fremen. Together, they put the spice production on hold and gave Raban a run for his money. Unfortunately for Raban, the Emperor arrived on Arrakis and wasn't too pleased with the state of affairs. So he had Raban apprehended and executed. And just to add insult to injury, the Emperor made sure Raban's head was on display like a morbid centerpiece in front of his throne. That's one way to end a family reunion, I suppose. However, Raban is killed by the Fremen and the people of Arakin when Paul Muad'Dib Atreides retakes Arrakis using Fremen forces. Number 4. Glossu Raban's Cruelty in the 2000 Dune Miniseries In the 2000 miniseries, Glossu Raban was the kind of guy who probably kicked puppies for fun. He had a face that looked like it had spent too much time in the sun, with icy pale blue eyes that could chill your bones. He was so short-tempered that even a fly buzzing around him could trigger a nuclear meltdown. He was obsessed with the idea of getting a sandworm trophy to show off to his buddies on Getty Prime. So he went on a sandworm hunt with Pardot Kynes. But when he finally managed to blow up a sandworm with heavy explosives, it dissolved into sand trout, leaving him trophyless and even more frustrated. But that wasn't enough to satisfy his twisted desires for long. He went on a different kind of hunt when he killed the parents of poor Duncan Idaho, just for sport. He even ordered Duncan to be healed so he could give good sport in the hunt. Talk about a sadistic jerk. Unfortunately for him, his reign of terror was cut short by the Fremen population of Arakin, who had had enough of his brutal ways. Glossu Raban, the man who kicked puppies and killed them for sport, finally got what was coming to him. Number 5 Glossu Raban's appearance in Dune 2021. In Denis Villeneuve's Dune, Raban is a man whose physical appearance is as terrifying as his ruthless demeanor. With a face that could curdle milk and skin that's a mixture of olive and Caucasian, he looks like he could put the fear of God into his enemies with just a single glance. And boy does he deliver on that promise. Unlike previous depictions of Raban, Villeneuve wanted to avoid the character being a caricature of evil. He succeeded, giving the character a suit that looks like it was designed by a sadistic insect-loving fashionista. With a helmet that resembles an ant's head, it's clear that Raban and the rest of the Harkonnens are predators, who are not to be messed with. Luckily, Dave Bautista, who plays Raban in the film, is more than capable of embodying the beast's intimidating presence. With a chiseled physique that would make even the rock jealous, he doesn't need a suit to make him look like a force to be reckoned with. But don't be fooled by his muscle-bound exterior, Bautista is an artist at heart, taking direction from Villeneuve to bring Raban to life in the most authentic way possible. 
Number 6. Is Glossu Raban a part of the upcoming Dune 2? We'll be seeing a lot more of Dave Bautista's Beast Raban, the guy who makes Game of Thrones' Ramsay Bolton look like a Boy Scout. With the Harkonnen forces taking over Arrakis at the end of Dune Part 1, we'll get to see even more of Raban in Part 2. And rumor has it that he might even commit the most beastly act of all, killing a child. But wait, there's a catch. In the original book, Leto II, Paul and Cheney's son, is murdered by a Sardukar attack. However, in the 2000 miniseries Frank Herbert's Dune, Raban is shown as the one who draws the knife and commits the heinous act. But back to the real question, will Bautista's Raban be even worse than in the book? It's a tough call. Laszlo Kish's Raban is currently holding the title of the evilest Raban, while Paul L. Smith's version from the 1984 movie is the most over the top. But then again, there have been just three of them. Only time will tell if Bautista's Beast will be a little of both or a whole new level of terrifying. Either way, we're strapping in for a sandstorm of emotions in Dune Part 2. So if you're looking for a villain who looks and acts like they step straight out of your worst nightmares, look no further than Raban from Dune. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching, be safe out there, and have a marvelous day.